This video is about the most important properties from bipolar transistors. You can see that I have quite a few of them. This box, this box and this box. Here I made kind of paper where I uh, glued with cello tape all the transistors, tested them first on their amplification factor, etc. So the most important properties from bipolar transistors, of course the very very basic property is whether it's an NPN or PMP transistor. Here you see some ways to connect uh, NPN or PMP transistors. The NPN transistor always has to have its collector on the positive lead. The PMP transistor always has to have its collector on the negative lead. Uh, by the way, the, where the ground is connected, where you want to ground the circuit, that's arbitrary. In the past, in the 70s, uh, there were a lot of uh, germanium transistor circuits with their uh, ground on the positive lead. Now it's somewhat common to connect uh, the ground to the negative lead because we have so many uh, uh, silicon transistors. Something about the, the principles. When you connect here a positive voltage via a resistor, the current starts to flow. When you connect here a negative voltage, here, the current starts to flow, here. Uh, again, when you connect here a negative voltage, the current starts to flow. And when you connect here a positive voltage, the current starts to flow. So, something to take in account, PMP or NPN, one of the important properties. Uh, ground is arbitrary. The most important um, properties from bipolar transistors are their collector emitter voltage and the maximum the base collector voltage, the amplification factor the highest frequency where the amplification is possible or gets down to 1, that's often called in transistor books, like this one, the transition frequency, and of course whether the transistor was made for low frequencies, medium frequencies, high frequencies, and that all has to do with the transition frequency and the amplification factor. Uh, normally, quite normally, in many cases, when the base voltage here gets higher than the collector voltage, almost all transistors will break down and get defective. There are, however, a few transistors made by Philips and perhaps more and, and other manufacturers, I don't know that exactly. Um, that can handle a higher voltage on it on their base. So the BD139 and the BD140 can handle on their base a higher voltage than on their collector. That's here. And that's very important, especially in oscillator circuits. In oscillator circuits, uh, when you feed back a signal to the base, you don't know much about the, the amplitude and the voltage that really gets into the base uh, connection here, the base electrode. And when it is too high, you will immediately, immediately blow up your transistor. So that's why I use in my videos always the BD139 and the BD140 uh, because they have that property. So for oscillator circuits, when you connect here a coil and want to take signal out, etc., etc., that's good. And also other oscillator circuits, simple oscillators on shortwave, for a very peculiar reason, 
they often burn out with small signal transistors like the BC547 or so and that's the reason why I use in oscillator circuits for instance this oscillator circuit here BD139 works very good was made uh, for uh, low frequencies, medium frequencies, high frequencies and even up to 120 megahertz. It still works. So let's go again along these um, collections of uh, transistors. I salvaged a lot of them from Japanese uh, audio amplifiers etc etc. I don't use them uh, nowadays so quite sorry that I've salvaged them but um, of course you can do uh, studies on their amplification factor etc. You see uh, a box that I use often I, I have here um, high voltage transistors uh, they are very usable for uh, voltages on their collector going from 100 volts up to 300 volts and this is for instance a good example from a transistor that can handle high voltages it's a 2SC2333 when I read that well 2333 from NEC Nippon Elect Electronics and I've used this, this uh, transistor in um, in an amplifier for an oscilloscope uh, where I move the dot from the left to the right side on the oscilloscope screen. This is a useful high voltage transistor with a good amplification factor and good properties. I've also bought for instance in the past this transistor it's the BUE12AF from Philips it was sold as a transistor that can handle 1000 volt at 8 ampere but of course when we when we um, do some calculations when we multiply it it's never possible that this uh, transistor can handle 8000 watts so that means that the current between the collector and the emitter always has, always has to be limited that's very important. So it's a usable transistor. You can use it in many circuits, uh, high voltage circuits up to 600 volt, 800 volts. But the current between the emitter and the collector has to be limited somewhat. This is the BD115 European transistor that was usable, uh, was, uh, was used many times in deflection circuits for classic um, tube type televisions. We had there a deflection unit for uh, three colors um, as far as I know uh, blue, red and yellow or something like that and each color had its own deflection transistor connected to a grid in the uh, true in the three electron cannons in such a, an old old school electronic uh, television tube each color had its own transistor that that drove um, the line on the screen again here some uh, some things to show transistors that I've measured in the past I only uh, paid attention to the question whether they were NPN or PMP and their amplification factor uh, well there are a few other things to know does a transistor uh, easily oscillate well uh, that's not always the case. Some transistors cannot be uh, put easily into oscillation.
but there, there are a few transistors that always oscillate. And this is for instance one example, good usable for shortwave oscillators, etc. is a 2N2219. And in these oscillators you can also use the BD139 NPN transistor. Also a very good um, oscillator transistor and the reason is that it has a quite high amplification. That makes oscillation circuits more easy. BD139 in an oscillator circuit. So here you see for instance a very simple circuit, protection resistor, with this um, potentiometer you can make the transistor to um, get it in such a way that here a current flows. When you move the potentiometer to the negative the current is pinched off. So conduction, you set the transistor into conduction here with that potentiometer. You can also do that with PMP transistors. This is an NPN transistor. With a PMP transistor you can make the completely the same circuit but reverse these two connections. So negative here and positive here. Um, well, some peculiar things. These are old germanium transistors ASZ1017. That's also uh, an important uh, thing to tell. Old germanium transistors and germanium transistors in general are very sensitive to temperature changes. So they can run away, uh, they can um, completely get out of their working point when the temperature gets too high on such an old germanium transistor and germanium transistors in general. So there must be a very very good temperature control in germanium transistors audio amplifiers that uh, have to handle some uh, output, audio output, strong audio output. So okay, um, I've showed for instance a few transistors 2N3055. This uh, 2N3055 doesn't have a good amplification factor, but this has a very good amplification factor, approximately 50, uh, old school or old one, and uh, a new one. And especially when you test uh, high voltage transistors, like these ones, these are all high voltage transistors, you have to take in account that all these transistors were made for high voltages and when you measure them, when you measure their amplification factor with such a, 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 a meter, amplification factor meter, the voltage where, uh, with which the transistor is measured on its amplification is in fact very low, too low. And that's the reason why when I connect uh, a high voltage transistor I only measure an amplification factor from 3 or so. So that does not mean that this transistor is defective. That's important to tell. I have to stop now. My camera uh, tells me that I have only 43 seconds left. Wish you luck.